Are you ready to start moving things in Blender? Now, if you followed along with the last video, hopefully you had an opportunity to practice moving your view, looking at things from different angles and moving it to different places. And then hopefully you also practice snapping to the front and the side and the top and the bottom and the back view. And you, you hopefully got a little bit of practice in that. It's very important when you're 3D modeling to be able to see things from different angles because again, your screen isn't 3D, it's flat, it's 2D. So while something might look good from a certain angle, and then you look at it from another angle and realize, oh, that's, that's not the way that I wanted it. Changing your view is the only way to get the idea of, of what's really happening here. Well, now that we're good at that, I hope that you will practice moving all the time. But now we're going to start moving the object. We're going to keep our view the same, but we're going to take the object and put it somewhere else. And there are many ways to do that. The, I don't know, maybe most user-friendly method are the tools on the left-hand side of the 3D view. On the left-hand side of your 3D view, you'll notice that there are these icons. And, and you can actually move your mouse to the right edge of those icons, click and drag and pull it out, and it'll go double column and then pull some more. And it'll actually have the names of those little tools. Now, personally, I like to keep that as a single column right there that works best for me because I know what these are but if you ever wonder what they are you can stretch it out and see the name of them we want to click on the move gimbal now it looks like an arrow going up down left and right so if you click on that gimbal you'll notice that on our object now we have three arrows one going up one going to the side green blue and red and if you click on the circle in the middle of that object the, the little white circle click and drag then all of a sudden we're moving our object around and it's it's a really easy and fun way to move things to different places in our view now i'm going to put suzanne back in the middle and i'm going to use Control z to do that so remember god forgives but Control z undoes there we go and we're going to use a different method to move Suzanne around this time. I'm going to go ahead and select the select box tool gimbal on the left hand side. So I don't have the movement gimbal selected anymore. And I'm going to go into the object menu, transform, and there's move. Now notice the hotkey for this one. This is actually wrong and, and it should be G. I don't know why it says left mouse and maybe in future versions they'll fix this so it goes back to being G. The hotkey for this is G. So instead of clicking the transform menu, I'm gonna go out of that and just in my view here, hit G on my keyboard. This stands for grab, grab and move, and then move it around and then click to place your object where you move it. This kind of three-step process is the way to do this. So G, move, click to confirm your movement. G, move, click to confirm your movement. So this, this hotkey method is the way that we used to do it all the time. And for me, this is perhaps the, the most fastest user-friendly method for, for me to do that. But I'm used to doing it that way. Maybe you don't like it that way. That's fine. There are multiple ways. But I want to show you. I want to put Suzanne back in the center. How, how do I do that? Well, I could undo again. But instead, what I want to do is go up to the object menu go down to clear and choose location. I want to clear its location. Click that one, but notice it's Alt G. So instead of clicking it, I'm going to go out of the menu and press Alt G. Oops, I hit the wrong one. Alt G on my keyboard. And there we go, she jumps back to the middle. Now why did clearing her location put her back in the middle? Because transforming movement is a transform command and there's lots of transform commands that we can do and so we can clear those transformations why why is movement a transformation because you can animate it and remember blender is an animation program so you can animate the movement of something we're not too worried about animating it but it is useful to know that we can move it around and then alt g to put the movement back in the center. That, that is a super useful skill to have. However, you might have noticed as you were moving things around. In fact, I'm going to do a little exercise right now and I want you to do it with me. Take Suzanne, 
and using whatever method you want, move her somewhere else on the screen, but do not change your view. Hold your view still through this exercise. So if you need to put her back, hold your view still, G, move her, and then we're gonna add another object. And it doesn't matter which mesh object we had. So I'm gonna hit Shift A to add a mesh, and you could use any one of these. The circle, I'm gonna put up a circle, but you notice it's just a circle that's not actually a shape, but I don't care. I'm gonna hit G, I'm gonna move it somewhere else, and then I'm gonna hit Shift A to add another object, and this time I'm gonna add a cube. And I'm gonna hit G and move it somewhere else, and Shift A to add another object, and this time I'm gonna add a UV sphere and G and move it, shift A to add. And just do this, do this over and over again until you've got a whole bunch of objects. And if you need to pause the video so that you can play with this to put as many objects on the screen and just, just move them, but do not change your view when you do this. Just move and add a new one, move and add a new one. I think I've got enough on the screen now that we can we can take a look at what happens. So you see these objects are all in different places on the screen. Now, I want you to orbit your view and look at it from a different angle. And what do you see? If you line it up right, you might notice that all the objects are kind of lined up with each other. They're not they're not just anywhere. They're all kind of on this same sort of flat plane and what defines this flat plane where where did this come from now if you want to practice it again you can try a different view here you know what i'm going to hit a to select everything and then x to delete it and click delete and i'm going to go to my top view so i just hit seven on my numpad but you can do it however you want and i'm going to repeat the process add a mesh move it add a mesh move it, add a different mesh, move it. And you know what? I think three or four of these is enough to show what's going on now. Move to a different view and notice they're all lined up more or less flat on the plane. Okay, I'm going to delete everything and go to the front view. And this time I'm going to add and move, add and move, add and move. And when you do this a couple of times, you'll notice now they're all lined up kind of on the up and down plane. So what are we learning here? What we're learning is that movement is based on your view. So if you're viewing things at a side angle, they'll all be lined up at a strange side angle. But if you're viewing things from the front on, they'll all be lined up with the front with the up, down, left, right. And so it's all based on view, but what if you don't wanna move things based on view? What if you wanna control it? What if you only want to move it left and right and you do not want it to go forward and backward or up and down as you're doing that? Well, that is constrained movement and there are ways that you can do it regardless of your view. Let's go back to the movement gimbal. So I'm just gonna go click that and notice those red, blue, and green arrows. If I click on the red arrow and click and drag it, notice that even if I move my mouse forward and backward, it does not move forward and backward in the plane. And I can finish that movement and rotate my view to confirm that, yeah, it only moved left and right. I can move, in fact, I just add another object and move it to the other side. And I'm gonna add another object and I'm just using the red arrow to move it now Notice that all of the movements are stuck in that left-right direction because I'm only using the red arrow to do it. Let's add another object, and this time, let's move it only using the green arrow. And notice again, if I move left and right, it doesn't move left and right, it just moves forward and backward. Hopefully this is pretty intuitive to you about what's going on and how that's working. What do you think is gonna happen when we click and move with the blue arrow? Well, obviously, it's only gonna move up and down regardless of where the mouse is. So that's pretty cool. We have the ability to constrain the movement regardless of, of where our view is. Now I'm gonna select everything and delete it and add a mesh Suzanne back in. And this time I'm going to select the select box gimbal so I don't have my movement selected. And I'm going to show you how to do this with the hotkeys. Do you remember the hotkey for movement? 
it was to grab and move the G key. But then once you tap the G key, when you start that movement, then tap the X key, and that constrains your movement to the X movement, left and right. Okay, let's add another, I don't know, mesh circle and GX to move it to the side. Grab a mesh cube and GX and move it to the side. But what if I wanted to move it only forward and backward? Well, let's add, let's add another Suzanne in there. G Y on my keyboard, and now I'm stuck in the Y movement only. So shift A, cylinder, G, Y. What if I want to move it up and down? Do you know if X goes left and right and Y goes forward and backward, what do you think goes up and down? Hopefully you've figured that out already. G, Z, and you're up and down. Add a cylinder, G, Z, down, and then click to finish that movement. All right, that's pretty cool. Now, what if I wanted to move something though, and I wanted it to stay in the flat plane, I just didn't want it to move up and down. I want it to go forward, backward, I want it to go left and right. Let's select everything and delete it. And let's add Suzanne back in. Let's turn on the movement gimbal. And notice that inside the movement gimbal, there are these little flat planes. There's a flat plane between the green arrow and the red arrow that's a blue flat plane and if you click and drag on that blue flat plane notice it's moving around but when i stopped the movement it did not move up and down it only moved side to side forward and backward likewise i'm going to hit alt g to put suzanne back in the middle or you can undo it if you want but alt g i think is a good way to do it see the green plane okay I'm gonna to go to a side angle and hit the green plane and move it around. Well, now I'm moving up and down and left and right, but if I finish that movement and change my view, I did not move forward and backward. So it's interesting that the green plane moves it every direction, but the way the green arrow moves. And if I hit Alt G to put Suzanne back, I can use the red plane. The red arrow goes left and right, so the red plane moves everything except for left and right, it keeps it down the middle. So that's pretty cool. Alt G to put her back in the middle. I'm gonna select the select box gimbal and let's talk about how we do this with the hotkeys. If I press G and I start my movement and then I press Shift Z, it will be moving left, right, up, or forward and backward and left and right, but it will not be moving up and down. So shift Z is everything but Z, kind of like with the movement gimbal, that the green plane was everything but the green direction with the hotkeys, the shift X, shift Y, shift Z is everything but that direction. So I'm gonna hit Alt G to put her back in the middle. I'm going to hit G to move, and this time I'm going to hit shift X, and it's moving up, down, forward and backward, but not left and right, not in the X direction. Alt G to put her back, and then G shift Y, moves her up, down, left and right, but not forward and backwards. So that is how we do constrained movement, and hopefully you've been following along with that one because here is your homework assignment. Your homework assignment is to create kind of a grid and, and I want you to do this from a side angle. You can't control, I mean, you can if you control your view, sure. Oops, I've made a mistake, but that's all right. Control Z undoes. So you could control the view and, and only move it up, down, left, right. But I want you to do this from a strange angle and use constrained movement. And I want you to try practicing the hotkeys with the G, X, G, Y, G, Shift, Z, whatever. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to take an object, any mesh, I don't care, and move it on the X in one direction, add another object, X in the other direction. Add an object and move it in the Y, and then add another object and move it in the opposite Y, and then do the same for the Z. So we'll have an object above and below, okay? Then what I want you to do is put an object between both of these with a single movement command in the X and Y, and then I want you to put an object between these 
in the uh, Y and Z. And then I want you to put an object in the X and Z and the... So we're basically going to have, oh, how many objects are we going to have here? We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen objects. We're not going to worry about the corners of this kind of big cube that we're making with objects because these corners are kind of impossible to do with a single command uh, precisely. You can do it with, you know, you'll, it, well, I mean, if you want to figure it out, if you want to figure out how to place it, you're going to need two movement commands to get it there, but I want you to get it as, you know, precisely as possible so this kind of forms a cube. But that's your homework assignment for this video. And I, I want you to practice that, practice moving with constraint, try doing it with the hotkeys, and try doing it with the gimbal, see which one you like best. But that's all for today. I want to thank you very much for watching. And I want to remind you again, you are a child of God and you're special and I care about you. So take care of yourself. And if you can take care of some others too, because we can all use each other's help. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.